Hello and welcome back to The Note. This has been a very dramatic week and I'll try to pull it together. Now, first of all, in most of the main stock markets it wasn't actually all that dramatic. Most of them were down for the second week, including the S&P. One very big exception to that was the Shanghai Composites over in China, which was up roughly 9%. A continued remarkable speculative boom going on there. The real action was in the bond market. Now, here in the States, the 10-year uh, Treasury yield, vitally important benchmark, uh, has hit 2.4% for the first time since last October. Bear in mind that it's come a very long way this year. It has been a lot lower than this early this year. The real centre of gravity uh, for the bond market, however, has been in Germany. The 10-year Bund yield uh, is now at 0.84%. Uh, That's its highest since last November. But the boomerang in yields during the week was really quite remarkable. At one point, the yield, admittedly from a very low base, had more than doubled just for the week. The cost of borrowing, the cost of money within Germany over the long term had more than doubled in the space of four trading days. That's quite extraordinary volatility and it has effects elsewhere. It's also led to speculation that the uh, equity market could also have made a top. If you want to take a look at uh, another uh, strand of evidence that people cite for uh, an equity market top, this is uh, M&A volume in the US going back some 20 years. If, As you can see, however, if you look at that in real terms, accounting for inflation, then although we're at a peak in nominal terms, the uh, rise we've seen doesn't look that remarkable. We're still below the peaks of the last two M&A cycles, both of which came uh, at peaks for the market. It looks more as though we are entering the final stage of this bull market, this M&A cycle, rather than that we are already at the peak. Plainly something could go wrong there, but I don't think the M&A cycle at this moment is evidence of a true peak, even if it is evidence that the bull market is entering its last phase. Now, the most important economic news for the week came today, on Friday, with uh, the latest round of, um, of unemployment data from the US. That data, the bottom line, is that it was very much better than expected. The most important data concerns average earnings. We're showing you two measures of average earnings here. The uh, uh, average hourly earnings reported monthly uh, it, in the uh, uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics survey, you can see is uh, right back at the top of its range, 2.3% uh, year on year, but it hasn't broken out of that range. You can also see an alternative measure, the ECI measure for the uh, private sector is actually showing further signs of breaking out beyond that. This is critically important and it's where you get to a disjunction between Main Street and Wall Street. Plainly, further increase in average earnings is exactly what most Americans badly need. It should be very strong, very good for the economy, and it does look as though we're at a point of breaking out. Once that happens, though, plainly, that is the point at which uh, the Federal Reserve really cannot stop uh, itself from acting any longer, and you would expect to see rate rises. This data was good. That means that people think that broadly uh, a rate rise could be coming earlier, i.e. September rather than later, i.e. December or even being postponed until next year. That means that even though this data is thoroughly good for the US economy, it was, it, it was uh, interpreted as being bad for the stock market. You saw uh, uh, the S&P go down, you saw a sharp rise in, uh, in bond yields. I think that is ultimately the interplay we're going to have to get used to when it comes to trying to gauge a top for the market. If uh, the economy finally catches on, which would be great news for everybody, the huge question then becomes, can asset markets deal with the rising interest rates that must come in their wake? As for next week, there isn't a lot to look forward to on the docket in the way of data. Uh, the critical points to look out for there will be simply does the bond market continue with its current momentum? Does it create its own story? One big event to look forward to on Tuesday, however, which will have a great bearing on China, is that MSCI, the, uh, which produces the main benchmark index for uh, 
emerging market equities will announce its latest recomposition. It is considering adding Chinese A shares to that index. If it does so, that will be a very big news story. It could propel China further. If it doesn't, that could be a negative. That's the biggest event to look forward to next week. Have a good weekend.